Good Friday. How can one describe such a day? The wrongdoing of all humanity, putting to an end an innocent man, the Son of God. This is the story of Jesus' death by way of a cross, all in one moment bringing death to the bright light of our future. He never stopped loving us, and yet this is the incredible part of it. Our sin stopped his heart. Our sin drove the nails firmly in the hands of God. All along, these were the plans. We told ourselves that we were in control, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. The brutal beating, the inhuman flogging, the naked humiliation. Heaven watched and saw it all. Our rebellion, our guilt, our shame, erasing the very notion of reconciling us with God. Our sin and our debt, overcoming Jesus. Here is our King, obliterated. The enemy laughing, his plans unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of freedom rising. Now God's people are utterly broken. Behold the chains of mortality. Yes, this is what is true. We had heard the stories of old. The lost are found, the blind can see, the weak are made strong. But now we are witnesses to this reality. God is dead. We'd almost believed there is a way of redemption. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a peace beyond understanding. Now we know better. For us, we can say that God is encapsulated in this one realization. The single greatest sacrifice in human history is finished. How clearly we can see it. So what's so good about Good Friday? Just one thing, that the blood of Jesus can reverse the curse of sin and raise the dead to life. How clearly we can see it is finished. The single greatest sacrifice in human history encapsulated in this one realization. We can say that God is for us. Now we know better. There is a peace beyond understanding. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a way of redemption. We had almost believed God is dead, but now we are witnesses to this reality. The weak are made strong. The blind can see. The lost are found. We had heard the stories of old. Yes, this is what is true. The chains of mortality utterly broken. Behold, freedom rising. Now God's people are unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of the enemy laughing. His plans obliterated. Here is our King, Jesus, overcoming our sin and our debt, reconciling us with God, erasing the very notion of our rebellion, our guilt, our shame. Heaven watched and saw it all, the naked humiliation, the inhuman flogging, the brutal beating, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. We told ourselves that we were in control. All along, these were the plans firmly in the hands of God. Our sin drove the nails, our sin stopped his heart, and yet this is the incredible part of it. He never stopped loving us the bright light of our future all in one moment, bringing death to death by way of a cross. This is the story of Jesus, the Son of God, an innocent man putting to an end the wrongdoing of all humanity. How can one describe such a day? Good Friday.
Good Friday. How is this Friday any better than the last? I mean, I'm not sure about you, but I find myself confused, lost. I find myself stuck in my home. I find myself unable to visit my parents or go to work. I find myself trying to apply for unemployment. I find myself broke. I'm not sure about you, but I'm not sure how good this Friday truly is. But today, you want me to celebrate Good Friday? What's so good about it? Oh, oh, you want me to remember the scriptures? Oh, the story in the New Testament where there's this man named Jesus who was born and as a baby, the savior of the world, and we celebrate during Christmas. And then all of a sudden we find him doing ministry. And next thing you know, he's raised uh, so much uh, attention and, and, and created so much chaos that people want to arrest him. That's the king and savior, this guy named Jesus that, that I've read all about and I've heard all about. And then all of a sudden, he rides in on a donkey. And people have these palm branches out and they're waving them at him. And then I read in the New Testament a few chapters later that here he is at the Last Supper, washing people's feet. Uh, breaking bread and drinking wine and saying, hey, remember me when you do this. I mean, I, I've read these scriptures. And then we get to where he's arrested. I love the part where Peter pulls out his sword and tries to cut off the guy's ear. I mean, I love the action in that. But he's arrested and he's taken and he's beaten. And this is the king in which we read about who earlier in scripture was healing people with his hands, spitting in dirt and making blind see. And all of a sudden, here's the same Jesus that can't save himself. And then we find him dragging a cross up a mountain, up a mountain by himself dragging this cross and he gets to the top and he lays the cross down and we read in scripture that this these guys begin to pound nails through his hands and that's an emotional part to think about the tendons and how that must have felt in this guy named Jesus and then many of the men lifted this cross up and he hangs there and he begins to drown in his own blood. He begins to struggle to breathe. He speaks to a guy on the right and a guy on the left. And, and, he, and, he, and he calls out and prays multiple times. I've read these scriptures. I've read them. And then all of a sudden, I read these three words. Three words that I'll never forget. And I can quote them and I'm sure you can too. And these three words are the words in which rock me and help me understand as I think about why this day is good. Jesus, in one of his last breaths, utters the words, it is finished. And when I read it, I imagine him uttering these words and calling this out as if it's not an exhaustion. He didn't say it is finished as if he's exhausted and he's glad that he crossed the finish line of a marathon. It's as if he's hollering out, it is finished because of completion. Like you just finished a huge thousand piece puzzle. It is finished, Jesus says from the cross. It is finished. What Jesus was sent to do he has done. The Son of God sent to earth to die on a cross. His whole purpose was to die on a cross so that it would be finished. And what was that? 
What was that that was finished? Well, when I study this and I think about this, the word tetelestai that he uses when he says it is finished means that our debt is paid in full, that the sins you and I have been committing all of our life are paid for because of his death. It is finished. And that is why this is a good Friday. I hope you enjoyed that illustration. I hope you enjoyed just thinking about what that scripture truly means to us. And I hope that you found yourself in that story. I hope that you found yourself struggling. I don't wish you to be struggling, obviously. But I hope this story and I hope what I just said spoke straight to you. And I'd like for you to do something for me. Take a few minutes tonight when this Good Friday service is over. Just take a few minutes and think about the sins that you've been struggling with and the ones, the sins in which, those ones, you know, that um, the devil keeps telling you that you're unworthy because you keep doing them or because you've done them in the past. And I want you to recognize that when you cast your faith upon Jesus, that your debt is paid in full. And so if you've not done that yet, if you've not casted your faith upon Jesus and put your faith in the one who died for you and I, who allows us to call this Good Friday because of what he did for us was so, so good, that death could be good. Wow. I want you to cast your faith upon that father, that Jesus, that savior. He died for you. So right now, I would love for you to step into that relationship. Maybe it's a rededication. Maybe it's a first time step into a relationship with Christ. I want you to pray with me and recognize that today is a good, good day because of a good, good father who sent a good, good son to die on a cross for us so that our sins will be forgiven. Father, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for this night. I pray for the one right now who's praying with me, Father. Forgive them for their sins. Father, may they cast their faith upon you and turn from their wicked ways. Father, help them to understand, Jesus, your love for them and how their sins are going to be thrown as far as the east is from the west, your scripture says, and how they are going to be forgiven as they cast their faith in you. And Father, how they're made new through the blood of Jesus in which you shed on that cross. That's why today is good. Jesus, save them, forgive them, and empower them. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Happy Good Friday, and we'll see you Easter morning.